اللهم آذن لنا منك رحمة وعلم لنا منك علم سبحانك لا علم إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوذ تعلم وتعلم المذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والفعل والاستفادة والحاطة مسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ودعاء الهدى وذلنا أحمد يتحدنا على الخير اتغاء وشلا ومرضى في كل بطاوي سبحانه وتعالى معانك المعافم رحمك يا أرحم الرحم اللهم صلي وسلم على سينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ورسلم اللهم أهمنا علما نفقه به أوامرك ونهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف ناجيك يا أرحم الرحم اللهم إنا نسألك فهما نبيا وحفظ المرسلين والهم الملائكة المقربين يا عفيت يا أرحم الرحيم اللهم أغمنا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الرحيم الآمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وقاله وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما, قرأ وما نقرأه في هذا المجال وقبل وما بعد فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إليه إلينا وقت إحجانا إليه يا, يا أرحم الرحيم اللهم, اللهم أخرنا بالنور فهم وأخرجنا من ظلمة الوهم وأفتح علينا حكمتك وأشرك عن الرحمة يا رحمة الرحيم الآمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاليد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمور كلها يفتح يعني يفتح يعني يفتح يعني افتح علينا فتح قريبا صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح للصدر ويسر لأمر وحل الأقضى من السنة يفقه قولي وسر لساني وهد قلبي واجعل كذلك بأحباب آبدا ورزقنا كمال الفتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال الإخلاص والسلق واليقين والعافية والغناء والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاء والخير الدارين وعون الأول والآخر صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوينا بسم الله سيد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so now everyone did your own yes for Sirai so say no how many one and so say the question is for the second one Have you all, uh, the, the translation of the first part was sent out, right? Was it? it was, right? Did anyone print it out? No, I didn't, I didn't send it out. Did I not send it out? On the group's long time ago. First lesson. No? They're not doing it? Huh? Yeah, there's only one page. Uh, I got a translation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I know last week I didn't finish. I didn't even go into it. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I know, I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> He's in the groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. This one. Oh, sorry. Right. So, uh, all right. I'm just going to read from it. All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatiha al-Awdha al-Khatima al-Sabaq. ناس الحق بالحق وهم ذات المستقيم وعلى آله وصحبه حق قدره من دوره العظيم. رئيس الوزراء بيقول لي أبو لاس ويك ده فينيش the ten points last week the ten مبادي the ten foundations of learning سيرة. I finish it last week. So okay, I didn't stop like half day somewhere. Like are you sure? The benefits of سيرة. Hmm. Then finish going through all the benefits. You stop it. Four. Oh. Even our love for us. Okay. Then nine. Okay. So I'm going to continue a bit more in the Japanese of Sira and then we will, inshallah, start uh, with the translation that I... I'm going to start with the book. 
Right? So the book will be translated. The book is not translated into English yet. Right? So now it's in the process. Right? If our class. Right? So every week I'll be doing like whatever I'm going to be teaching, inshallah, I'll be translating and putting it on uh, to you guys on the uh, WhatsApp. Okay? So, uh, so I'm just going to finish up with the benefits of Sira, right, first, before we go into the book uh, proper. Alright, so we have the number four. It depends on our love for him. Allahu alayhi wa sallam. Who can, I'm not going to call names, right, but who can recap for me the first three? We're not looking at, okay, can look at Alright, who just like this contribute? Uh, you can look at your notes, okay. Alright, the first three of the benefits of Sira is, is the fourth one, right? What's the first one? I put the wrong book. Uh, I put the wrong book. <laughs> okay. Come on. Did I bring the mic? <laughs> I don't know. Just like the one was that one. Both. One is Hafiza's. One is mine. Uh, okay, first one. Come on. Anyone right? <coughs> yes, right. He's a perfect example. You want to see as we learn, as we learn uh, the Sira, right? We learn that he is the perfect example. Okay. What else? What's the second one? Second one. You know one right? Last week. <laughs> First one is that he's a perfect example. Second one. The love for Rasulullah is a heaviest thing on the scale of the day of judgment. Right? So you want to increase in love for Rasulullah. Alright. The third one. Understand the Quran better. Yes, I understand the Quran better. Right, because Khan Khulukuhu al Quran. Right, his 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 uh, characteristic, his personality was the Quran. Right. So when you understand him, right, you're able to understand the Quran better. You cannot divorce Sirah from Tafsir. Right. To know the Quran, even to understand the Quran properly, to, to know how to analyze and dissect the Quran, you need to know the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. Number four. Deepen our love for him, right? Where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has said, "La yuminu ahadakum, la yuminu ahadukum, hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidhi wa waladhi wa na wa nasa ajma'in." Whereby he said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? I uh, none of you have truly believed until I become more beloved to him than his father." Then his child, right? Then, then, uh, then all of the of human beings all together, including his own self, right? So that is when you really, really have uh, tasted the sweetness of faith and the completion of faith, right? When uh, he becomes more beloved to you than anything else, right? So uh, and 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 uh, Rasul and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala praises his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam many, many times in the Quran. And the whole Quran, you know, you can see as a tribute to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, Allah praises His Prophet over and over again. Right, and of the verses, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa taala highlights to us. And we mentioned this uh, two weeks ago. Eh? Right, so I don't blame you all for it's two weeks ago, right? It's quite far. <laughs> right, so uh, no, I'm just joking. Right, so it, um, so where Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Fi ma rahmatan min Allahi lin talahum, wa la kunta fadlun ghalil al qalbi, la fadlu min hawlik, la fadlu min hawlik." فَعَفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Right, so the verse goes where Allah highlights the characteristics of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says Right, and you know, it is, it is from Allah's mercy Right, that you are gentle unto them, Ya Muhammad And you are lenient unto them And this verse came down at the Battle of Uhud Right, whereby the companions, some of them, disobeyed the commandments of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Thinking that the war had ended Right, and they left their posts. Right, and because of that, right, the disbelievers came from from the back, right, from around the hill. We will go into Tira, right, the, the story. Right, I'll go into more detail as when we get there. Right, and and from there, you know, uh, the Muslims suffered great loss, including the uh, the the uh, the martyrdom of the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidah Hamza. Right, so and, and you know, you think if there's any situation where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can get angry at them, I right, can be mad with them, it is this one. Right, because they were told specifically, verbally, by Rasulullah do not leave your post unless I myself come and take you. And he even said, even if you see the birds pecking from our heads, it means that we are all dead, you know, and, are, you know, and you know, the birds have come and eat, eating us, do not leave your post. Right, but they uh, had a misjudgment, it was a misjudgment. And right? they thought the war had ended, right, and they actually left their posts. Right, so so and, and he didn't show, and we know that uh, last uh, two weeks ago we mentioned that he did not show a single bit of anger, or disapproval, or disappointment, 
or any form of negativity whatsoever. Right? It was as if you know it didn't happen. Everyone knew it happened. Everyone saw what happened. Right? But you know, he it was not mentioned. It was not reminded. It was not brought up over and over and over again. It wasn't even brought up once then, then, then. Right? But he left it. Right? He, he just you know he, he carried on right, with the war. Right? And they finished the war and they went back to Medina without a word being said of what happened. Right. So the so the, because he saw that the Zahabas, of course they felt sorry about what they did. Right? He saw that the lesson has been learned right, by them. So there's no point in going on and on and making them even worse and by by by, by their mis uh, their misjudgment. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to highlight this to the Muslims. Like see, look at your Prophet. Look at his character. And look at how he is. And he saw this happen. And do you see a word of do you see a crown? Do you see a no, do you see anything from him? Right? That you know, did he reprimand you in any possible way? And he could and he can. Right? Because he's the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he told them not to move. So he can say, you know, why listen to me? I'm the Prophet of Allah. Right? How dare you disobey me? How dare you? He could have done that. And he has a right to do so. Right? But nothing. So Allah says, from the mercy of Allah, you are gentle unto them. Right? Onto your onto your companions and onto your onto your, your community. And there is a there is a hadith of Rasulullah says that Shafa'ati li ahlil kabair min ummati. Right? Which means that my intercession on the day of judgment is for who? It is for those who do the worst sins of my ummah. That's my intercession. It means the, the, the drug addict, right? the drunkard, the and the worst of sins. Right? You just come to me on the day of the the shahada, just bring the shahada. Right? And he will do everything else for you. Right? He will stop to Allah, he will intercede, he will you know, he will he will he will he will bring up your case for you. And that gives us hope, you know, as 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 uh, followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he will stand there and he will say, Ya Allah, right, this person he believed in me, he believed in the message. Right, so even though he did all these, you know, atros- uh, like, you know uh, big sins, like atrocious sins, right, Ya Allah, he, there was belief, right, there was iman. Right, so there is a, is a hadith, right? Shafa'ati, my shafa'a, my intercession. It is the ahlil kaba'ir bi ummati. Right, the one who does who they do kabai, do you know big, big uh, major wrong actions. Right, that is not shirik. Right, everything other than shirik. Right. So and then also Allah continues by saying that you know you were gentle on the and he says, Wala kunta ghalidan qalbi lam min hawlik. Right, and if you were hard and harsh in your heart, right, they would have fled from around you. Which from us if for us is it's a lesson. Right, as you know, as teachers, as parents, as uh, aunties, uncles, all the siblings, as you know, people living in society, right? When you are harsh, when you are hard on people, they run away from you, right? Because even even for us, most of us have the same thing. They always, if you were harsh on them, if you were hard on them, and you have the right to do so, they will run away from you. Right? And Allah says, "Fa'fu anhu, wastaqfirna, washabirkum fil amr." Right, so forgive them. And he has forgiven them. It's not even like it's, it's, it's a common tense. Or just forgive them. But he has. So Allah SWT is just he's saying that as a lesson to everybody else. Like right? he has forgiven you. And right? was tough like ask Allah to forgive them. And he has done so. Not that he hasn't, he has. Washawirahum fil amr and continue to seek their opinion in, in, in affairs. Right? Even though they had a misjudgment, even though they disobeyed, even though they, they did what they did. Right? And, and you know you think they, they, they don't deserve to give any opinion at this point because they I told them not to move and they moved right but Allah says no right? don't even cut off this door of seeking their opinion on war right? on war on battle seek their shawirukum mushwara shawirukum ask their opinion seek their opinion and it's give them the respect that they are people that even though they made a mistake right? they made a you know, misjudgment don't cut them off so it's lessons for us also, you know, we like for our for our children, for our students, for you know, people around us, they make mistakes maybe one time, two times, three times. Does that mean you know we stop taking from them? Does that mean that we you know we cut them off and you don't know what you're talking about, you keep you know giving the wrong advice, you keep you know you don't know we don't. We still ask, right? And then you know it's a it's a mushara and you still discuss the situation, eh? Right? Right? And if you have firmness and conviction in whatever you whatever you have decided upon, then have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today's one of the things in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights the beautiful character of Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're on the number five. For so number five, right, it is a way to increase our faith and strengthen it. 
Okay, so when you learn about Rasulullah and you see all the signs the Prophet in his life, right, from before his life to after his life, you see all of these things. Right? It, it, it deepens your faith. Right? Because, you know, when at the end of the day, when you want to believe in a message, you want to believe in what someone is telling you, right, the first thing you look at is the messenger himself. So if someone comes to you and tells you, oh, the building is on fire, right, and you know this person is someone who will lie about these kind of things, Right, but if someone comes to you, you know this is a prankster, right? You know he's like a joker. He likes to make fun. He likes to you know uh, lie about stuff and then make people panic for no reason. Right, like the boy who cried wolf, that kind of person, right? So you know you would like you would have like nah, you doubt this, yeah, you're doubting me, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So when you when when it comes to message, and when it comes to stories, when it comes to uh, people warning you, people telling you about about something, about something important, like like, like hereafter, like the 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 the, uh, the existence of one God, right? You see the messenger. You cannot divorce the message from the messenger. Right? The credibility of the message rests on the credibility of the messenger. Right? So we need to learn about the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right? And you just, you know, your heart just, you know, you get, you get filled with faith, right? with iman, and love for him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And 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 trust me, one thing: when it comes to uh, following the laws of Islam, right? applying the laws of Islam. Right, or you know, just in teaching our children, teaching our, our students, everyone around us about laws of Islam. Right? If you remove the love for Rasulullah from the application of the law, right, the your children, your students, right, it'll be very easy for them to leave the law. Because they've not fallen in love with the one who brought the law. You understand? Right? So it's like a teacher. Right, and, and I have very a lot of experience when it, when it comes to teaching, you know, in, in like secular schools, in Marathon, whatsoever. Right, when, when, the, when the students admire you and they respect you, whatever you tell them, they do. <laughs> they actually do it. And it can be the same instruction as another teacher whom they don't respect. Right? That teacher, they don't really care about their homework. They don't care to sit down. They don't care to not make noise. Right? They don't really rest. There's no love and connection. Right? But when it comes to a teacher whom you know they look up to, and they respect, and they don't want to disappoint. Right? It actually, it boils down to that they don't. And we all know as students, we know there's always that one teacher or mm-hmm. two teachers in our school that you know I will always do her homework. <laughs> right? There are teachers that you don't care less, <laughs> like you couldn't care less about her homework, right? because you're like you don't you you are not attached to that teacher. And there are teachers that you don't want them to be disappointed with you. And you just you try all you try your best, you know, but you just. You know, I, I, no matter what, I'll do her homework. <laughs> right, so you even do her homework in other teachers' classes. <laughs> because you want her to be the one with you. But other teachers don't care. So, you know, it, it matters if the, the connection of the student with the teacher as to whether or not they, do, they obey. Right? And it also matters if the connection of the child, the child and the parent, whether or not they, they obey. Right? So, you know, it's, it's, it does, it affects as they grow older. Right? So, we, we understand this. So, you know, and there was once... Um, uh, my husband, yeah, he gave a talk once at, uh, when we were in Tarim, right? Uh, because during the Maulid, they always have talks right, afterwards. So he was asked to give a talk. Right? And the first time he gave a talk, he was, he is a teacher himself, right? And he, you know, and, and the talk that he gave was like, as, as from the point of view as a, of a teacher. Right? And we know the greatest of teachers is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Right? And you know that he, he actually, what he was doing was that he was teaching us in this life, how do we pass this test? And the result day, it's a day of judgment. Right. So he was so he began my husband he began by saying, you know, when you are a teacher and you're teaching your child and you're a student, right, for example, for four years from set one, set four, for example, or for two years, set three, set four, or maybe in, in primary school, right? Primary five, primary six, you teach them. Right? And you train them and you train them and you train them and you tell them, you know, you spot them for them for them questions and answers and whatsoever. You try them to help them with their examination. On the exam day. Right? On the exam day. Right, you will stand there anxiously, right, as the teacher, right, to see how they fail, right, and then and you see students when they do very well, they run to you, right, they run to you as a teacher, teacher, I got all A's, teacher, teacher, I got, you know, they, they they are so proud to show you the results because you help them achieve it, right, and then there are those students who shy away, right, they don't come to you, they run away from you, they don't want to see your face, right, because they know you put in so much effort to help them and then they got an F or they got a D or they got you know something wrong right and they ran away so my husband he said uh, in his speech he was like and I didn't know he was going to say that <laughs> like he he said you know 
when the day comes when our results will be shown and our teacher is that anxious he will be anxious Allah he will be anxious and he said to us in a hadith look out for me in four points on the day of judgment it is part of his sirah it's part of his life of his existence look out for me in four instances so you where Rasulullah where do I find you he said when the books are being distributed I will be here I'll be watching I'm watching for my ummah and I know you all from your marks of sujud or your marks of wudu on your faces on your arms I can, I can know who you are right. look out for me I'm there if you get your book in your left hand call out to me right. don't, don't, don't run away from me tell me tell me I will talk to Allah for you right. so the examiner Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, is giving out the result slips Right, so you know, and you can't choose which hand, right? The, the, depending on what you did, you know, your left or your right. Right, so you know, it could be your your right comes out, and alhamdulillah, you be of those that Allah described in the Quran, who will say, "Ha, o mukra'u kitabiya, inni zarantu anni mulaqil hisabiya, wa huwa fi aishat al rabiya." Right, he will he will get and for those who get the book, the right hand, and you will say, "Ha, look at this, look at this, o mukra'u kitab, read my book, read my results." See, see, I knew it. Say, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I was going to see in my account. So I worked for it. I knew this day would come. Right. And it's on the highest, highest parts of paradise. Right. And then the other one. For Amma, Man Utiya Kitabu Bishimani. For Yaqul, Ya Laika Nilam Uta Kitab. And the one who got his book in his left hand, he will say, if only I did not even get my book. Ya laitaha kanatil qadi. Ya laitaha kanatil qadi. Ya laitaha kanatil qadi. Right, so, so he said, he said no, if only I wasn't given my book. If only it was the end, meaning death was the end. There was no resurrection. Because he thought there was no resurrection. Right, and then he would say, Halaka anni, ma agna anni, maria, halaka anni. سُلْطَانِيَ خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوا ثُمَّ الْجَحِيمَ صَلُّوا ثُمَّ فِي سِلْسِلَةٍ عَرْشُهَا سَبْعُونَ ذِرَاعًا Right, so Mafi. So, and so you'll be said to him, right, so, يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوتَ كِتَابِيَا وَلَمْ أَدْرِ مَا حِسَابِيَا يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَا مَا أَغْنَ عَنِّي مَالِيَا هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَا خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوا Right, so, so he says, you know, if only I wasn't given my book, right? you know, may I be destroyed. I don't want to get my books in my life. Walam adri ma hisabi. I don't even know what's in it. <laughs> I don't even read it. Right? Want, like some people, you know, they, like when they give out result slips in school, and if you're a teacher and you, and you arrange your slips according to marks, I never do that. I never do that. <laughs> right? But if you're one of those who do, right? If you're one of those who do, right? And as you call out the names, and the students know you do, you, you always do that, right? So when his name is not being called, 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 and he's of the last person to be called. Right? The child is like, I don't want to see it. Right? He said, like, I don't want to see the marks. I don't, I don't want to know. Right? What is the marks? That is the the, the scene on the day of judgment. Well, I'm not my I don't know what is there. Yeah, like the hakaya, the qadiya. If only death was the end. Ma agna anni maliya. Right? My 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 wealth didn't benefit me. Halaka anni sultania. Right, my, my, my kingship, my kingdom, right, it was destroyed, right. And then he was a khudhuhu fahullu, right, grab him, seize him, and cast him, right, fling him. Thumma jahim sallu, and he will be roasting in the fire. Okay. Right, so that is the first, the first situation whereby Rasulullah said, look out for me there, look out for me when the books are being distributed. The second situation, remember he said, look out for me, is at the mizan, right, the scales. Right, so when you add the scales and your 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 these are being measured on both sides, Rasulullah says, I will also be there. <laughs> right, look out for me because your checkpoint the day of judgment. Right, everybody has to go through. Oh, right? Inshallah, you don't have to go through go to the paradise. You know, like don't want to go through all these like, scales and the books and the and the sirah and, and uh, you know like all these things. So he says that the scales look out for me. I will be there. Right, so when you see your scales of bad deeds tipping over and your skill of good deeds not you know weighing up. Call out to me. Tell me, yeah, Rasulullah, I'm failing. Right? It's, it's failing, it's failing. Right? So then, then he will you intercede for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And say, Ya Allah, this person said one salawat unto me. Put it on his scale and make it heavy. 
Like give him extra marks, bonus marks, you know, like because he gives flowers unto me. Right? And he will intercede for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third place where he says, Look out for me is with the Sirot. And the Sirot is a bridge that suspends over the hellfire. Right? It is uh, and it brings you into paradise. Right? So this bridge is finer <coughs> than a strand of hair, sharper than a blade of sword. Right? So everyone will have to cross this bridge. So it is said that some of you will cross this bridge like lightning. Right, very fast. Some like the like the um, wink of an eye, the twinkle of an eye. Right. Some right will be running. Right. Some will be walking. Right. Some will be crawling. Right. Some will be on their like really really pulling themselves along the line. Right. Some take a step and fall off. Right. So it's that there are people right, who are good. and we know that Sayyidina Fatima Zahra when she crosses over this 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 bridge, she will be on a on a beast on a camel. Right, and you'll be said to everyone there, all of you lower your gaze for the daughter of, of the Prophet is about to cross. Right? And she will cross like lightning. And together with her is every woman who tried to follow her. Every woman. Right, who followed. Right, they will be together with her across the bridge. Right? This is why we know that we all of us, one of them. Mm-hmm. Alright, so, uh, so in the fourth part, right, the fourth place whereby you will see you or something, look out for me there, right, is the how. And the help is basically the pool. And after the bridge comes the pool. And the pool of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is said to be, you know, uh, more expensive and is more wide than between Turkey to or between yeah, Turkey to Yemen. And it's, it's very big. <laughs> okay, the pool of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And around this pool, right, there are a number of cups as a number of stars. Right. So and so some people come to the pool. Right, and they will drink from the cups around the pool, and they will drink. And when they drink from this pool, they will never feel thirsty ever again. And some people, they will, and and the Sahabas are around, and Abu Bakr is and Omar, and Omar, and the and the is all there, right? And they will be giving out the water, and because you have passed all the stations, you now you know resting point, right? Water, right? So some of some people will, have, will be lucky enough to drink from the hand of Rasulullah himself, and not from the cup, right? From the hand of the Sahaba, Shaykh Rasulullah Fatima Zahra, and there are many types of people on it. But, but there will be a group of people who will come to the running to the to the pool, right? And Rasulullah is ready to give them water, right? And the angels will grab them and bring them away. Right? And Rasulullah say, "Why? Why are you doing that to the angels? Why are you doing that? They are my people. They are my people. Let them be." And the angels say, "You don't know what they did after you. You don't know what they did after you. Right? They left your soul. They left your way, and they took other ways." Then also, also from six, then be off with them. So, so, so happens at the pool, right? So if this happens, I call you. You know, we try. <laughs> we actually try. Right? So it, um, how do you get into that? Right. So 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 basically, uh, right. So the uh, Quran is a tribute to ourselves. You know, it's the way to increase our faith and strength. Mm-hmm. In, right. Uh, in strength. Uh, in this religion. Right. So um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that part is on the. Okay. So on the on the day on the day of judgment, right? So my husband, my husband, my husband, yeah. my husband was saying that you know like he can, how will he be? On the day of judgment, right? And after knowing, after we leave the Sira, and you know how much Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam strove for us, how much he he put in for us, right? how much you know effort, how much blood, sweat, tears, right? He did to bring us the message, right? And he tried so hard to help us pass this life, and he is a work solution. Just copy, just, just copy him, just copy him. You don't really have to know so much, just copy him the way he is. Right? And then how will you be on the day of judgment? Right? But you get your results. Right? And you disappointed your teacher. Right? And you see your results. Right? And you, you just, you, how, how, how do you face him on that day? Right? But we have to. Right? There's no other choice. You can't run away. You can't run home. <laughs> right? We have to face him because there's no one else who can help you on that day. Right, except for your prophets of Allah who are in the So increase our faith, our faith and strength. Uh, and strengthen our faith. Right. So uh, and from there with the love of Rasulullah SAW, comes obedience. Right. So if you really want your children and you your students to know how to obey this religion, to want to follow the lo- the rules. And you mentioned before that uh, in another class that the the, 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 the laws of Islam is a lot. It is a lot, right? The thick, the laws of Islam. And some people find it overwhelming. Right, but the easiest way to fall in love with Islam is to fall in love with Islam, and to fall in love with Islam is to fall in love with the Prophet. Mm-hmm. Right, and when you fall in love with him, you just follow him everywhere he does. 
Like nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too, you know, it's too, too much, right? Because if that's the way he was, that was what he did. And you go uh, on his way. Okay, number six. Number six. To assist us in understanding the religion holistically. Right, the aqidah, the ibadah, the character. Right, so to know the entire religion, right? Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Right, so uh, Islam, right, how is it being practiced? And then uh, Iman, right, what do we believe in? Right, from learning about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Ihsan on his character and how he is with other people. Right. Number seven, right, uh, for us to understand, right, less. Number? Iman, Ihsan, Islam. Iman, Ihsan, Iman, Islam, Ihsan. Three things, right? Ibadah, Afidah, character. Okay, Ibadah, Afidah, character. Alright, and number seven. Right, lessons on the to learn lessons on the correct way right, or methods to call unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so or to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being that one. If you really want to know how do we encourage those around us to to come towards Islam, how do we pull them right towards the religion? How do we call others to Islam? The best way to do so is to study the life of the the best one who ever called to Islam. Bin Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is the best way, if you want, right, to know how to call others to Islam. Okay, so uh, whereby Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Quran, "Qul hadhi sabili adu ila Allah ala basira ana wa man tabaani." Whereby Rasulullah, whereby Allah says in the Quran, "Say to Rasulullah sallam, say you say ya Rasulullah, hadhi sabili. This is my way. Adu ila Allah ala basira. I call to Allah in a clear sightedness." I mean, I call to Allah clear and sure of His religion. That is His way. Ana, me, Rasulullah Sallam, wa manitabaan, and those who follow me. That is how we call to Allah. That is how we call to Islam. All right. And number eight, right? His life story, his whole life story, it is a proof of his prophethood. Right? For us to see the proofs right, of the Prophet of, of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And number nine, right? It is the keys to happiness. Right, to learn about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is when you learn what is real love, what is true love. Right? There is nothing that you can... The love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not, no other love that you have ever tasted in this dunya. Right? It is something completely different. Right? To fall in love with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over and over again. Right? And how can we not love him right? when he himself has loved us before we were even born? And right? was he spoke about us before we even came into existence. And those who will come in the end of times, those who will come after him, whereby it was related, you know, when Rasulullah once said to the Sahabas, he said, you know, one day he was still there, the Sahabas, and he said, oh, how I love to meet my brothers. And then the Sahaba says, you know, Ya Rasulullah, aren't we your brothers? Aren't we your brothers? And he said, no, 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 you are my companions, you're not my brothers. And my brothers are people who have not come. Right, but when they come, right, they will, they, they will, they have not seen me yet. They believe in me, and I'll be waiting for them right, at my pool. And the Sahaba says, "Ya Rasulullah, how will you know them? We have not met them." And he says, "I know them from the traces of wudu that is on them, because they used to take wudu." So that is one of the hadith that uh, that even it shows where by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he loves, he 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 spoke about us. And, he loved, and there are many, many hadiths about he spoke about the people who are yet to come. And he spoke about the believers of them with a lot of admiration and praise. And he's waiting for them you know, uh, on the other side right, to come. And he's also mentioned that for every believer, at the point of death, right, when, you, when, when, you face, when you face death, right, um, for every believer, Rasulullah himself will come to you. You will actually see him on your death. And for every believer, to for, for, for him to usher you into the next world, right, into the world of the banza, right, the, the world uh, of the of the graves. Right, so it's for every believer, and he will come to you, right, and you know he will assure you, you know he will comfort you about that. Right, well, it's, it's, a, it's a very stressful situation to die, right, that you leave this world. Right, so he will come to every believer and he will assure them, right, into the next. He will usher them into the next world. Right. And there's also a hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Right. Once he was sitting with the Sahabas and he said, Which of Allah's creation right, has the most amazing faith? Right, and we faith. mentioned faith, yeah, faith. Iman. 
Right? Which of Allah's creation has the most creation, and including animals, plants, angels, everyone, right? Which of Allah's creation has the most amazing iman, amazing faith? So the Sahabas, they say, if you tell them to do, they don't answer the question. Sometimes they answer the question. And so the Apas in the Indian, there are hadith, but you see them say, you know, Allah and His Messenger knows best. They will see it that way. And there are some hadith, but they will say, they will try to answer the question. Now they will try to see what's the answer, right? So there were still some ones saying, you know, which, which of Allah's creation has the most amazing thing? And the Sahaba said, the angels say that also, no? The angels? And they say, and how, you know, and how can they not believe? Asked, how can the angels not believe when they are with Allah? They have to believe. They're there. <laughs> right? then, the, then the Sahaba says, the prophets say that also, They have the most amazing of it, the prophets. And then Allah says, and Rasulullah says, and how can it be the prophets right, when they keep, they receive revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself? Then the Sahaba says, As say Rasulullah, right, the companions of the prophets. And, and Rasulullah says, how can it be you? Right, when you are with me and you see what, what, and you see revelation as it happens. And then he said, the, most, um, the, the creation that has the most amazing faith Right, is a people, right? It's imanan. La qawmi yakununa min ba'dikum yajiduna suhufan fiha kitab wa yu'minuna bima fiha. And he says that the people with the most amazing of faith, right, they are people who will come after you. Right, they will come later. Right, they will find these books, the Quran. Right, they will find these texts that I have sent forth. Right, for myself to them. Right, and they will read it and they will believe in it. Have you never seen Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Have you mm-hmm. never seen any miracles in their lives? <laughs> like, really very boring lives compared to the Sahabas, right? Like, they saw a head, water coming off of Rasulullah's hand. They saw the cloud following him everywhere. They saw the moon split. Right? They saw the, the, the tree cry. They saw you know the, the stones in his hands doing tasbih. Right? Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. We all like, <laughs> Nothing much to talk about. Yeah, let's just say one who does a you know a miracle or whatever. But you know, like we don't see the Prophet of Allah. We don't see the light that shone that, that shone from his face unless you saw him, and you've seen him. Right? But you know, we're not at the Sahaba. We don't see all these things. And yet, yet they believe in me, right? And they love me, and they would sacrifice their lives for me. Right? So that these people, they are the most, they are the most amazing thing. Because faith comes from not witnessing. Right? Faith is something that comes in the heart without having to see. That's faith. Right? When someone says, do you have faith in me? Right? Meaning, do you, do you trust me? Do you have faith in me? I'm not showing you what I, what, what I, what I promised you, but do you have faith in me? Right? And it's trusting what I'm going to do. Right? So if faith is basically having trust in, the, in what you don't see. Right? It means you believe in him when he says that it's a paradise. You believe him when he says that there is a hell fire. You believe him when he talks about the sirat and the mizan and, and the weights and the skills and whatsoever and the angels and, and the devils and you've not seen a single one of and you've not seen a single angel in your life. Right? Where are the angels? Do you believe in the angels? You do. You know they exist, the angels. But have you seen one? Ever. <laughs> never. You know, maybe a person, you know, you call him an angel, right? But you've never seen like one in the wings, <laughs> right? Ever. So then, like, have you seen paradise? No. Do we believe in paradise? Very much so. We're working for it. Hopefully it exists. Alhamdulillah it exists. Inshallah it exists. We believe in full-heartedness. And we believe in that more than anything else in this world. Now that paradise exists. We have more yaqeen. We have more certainty that paradise exists. And we have more certainty that hell exists. And we have more certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. Right, so it's, it's, our, our, our certainty rests there. We are not certain that we, you know, this world, am I going to get a better job? Am I going to you know, get married? Am I going to have children? Am I going to, am I going to die in Singapore? Am I going to die overseas? Am I going to... This world has no certainty whatsoever at all. The only thing that we are certain about this world is our death. Right? But we have full certainty of things we have never seen. Right? That is of the next world. And that, makes, that is faith. And that is faith. Mr. Sena Ali says, uh, he said once, that even if all the veils were to be revealed, and I see you and being told. And we said, you know, if all the veils in between him and the next world was, 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 was lifted, right? And he sees paradise and he sees hell. He said, even then, my certainty will not increase because it's, 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 it is at its max. 
And if you don't even see, I'm you know, 100% certain. So even if I see, I know it's, it's there. It, doesn't, it will not you know, uh, change anything. I know it's there. Right, so that is uh, your pin, eh? All right. So we're going to begin the book, right? Uh, if you want to refer to the text I translated, right? Uh, I will begin from there, right? Uh, let me just read from the text. Anyone would like to read? The loud voice. Can you read? Thank you. All of the therapy first. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hey, you read, I read. Oh, you read that Arabic. Okay. Bismillah ar The first lesson. Tamheed. Right, the introduction. Ba'ath Allah Ta'ala Rasulah Huwa Al-A'azam Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam Hadiyan Mu'alliman Murshidan Min Khalqi Muhadziban Wa Dallan Lakum Ala Ma Fihi Sa'adatul Akhirah well, <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatih al-Ma'ulika Qatim al-Salaam 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 ala Sayyidina Muhammad al and he shows them what entails success in this world and the next. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to grow up on the most noble natural disposition, having the best traits, loftiest characteristics, and the most exalted states. Alright, so the, the author he begins right, by explaining why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his prophet. And before going to the Sira proper, and he explains why in this entire situation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent his greatest prophet, Allah alayhi wa sallam, first and foremost as a guide, hadiyan. Right? That's his main, his main purpose, to guide. Mu'alliman, to teach. Right? A teacher, a guide. Murshidan, the one who shows the correct way. Right? Al-Khalaqi wa Muhaziba, like a leader. Right? To, work to, to all of humanity. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his love for his creation, he created creation. And he loves his creation. Right? So he did not leave his creation right, to destroy themselves. Yet he sent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his way. Right? The way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he sent examples and he sent texts right, to guide his creation as to how do they be the best of his creation so that he is able to give them his paradise. Right? So you know, the whole system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the entire creation. So you know, to, 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 be, to be existent, it is a great blessing in itself to exist. And ni'ma al wujud for us to exist. And then to not exist. Because when you exist, you're able to love. And loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Surah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is of the greatest things. And that if you're able to attain, right? And then he says, Dalan Lahu Ma'ala Mafi, he sa'ala to al akhirah wa ula. Right? And he the Islam, he is the one who points us right, to whatever gives us happiness and bliss. Right, in the next world and in this world. Right, because you know, as people who believe, right, you want to have happiness wherever you are. Right, for most for human beings, if you ask any human being, right, what do they want? What do they want? What do they want? Right, they will say, maybe they will say, okay, a child might say, you know, I want a, a I don't know what's the latest thing now. <laughs> Why, where? Ball, eh? Ball. Okay, I want a ball. <laughs> I think I'm four year olds. Okay? Four year olds ask for balls. And when they get older, they get more complicated. Right? <laughs> okay, ball is easy. I want a ball. Why do you want a ball? I want to play with the ball. Why do you want to play with the ball? Because playing the ball is fun. Why do you want to have fun? It makes me happy. Why do you want to be happy? Happiness is the goal. Right? I want to be happy by playing. If you ask an adult, 
What do you want? I want a good job. Why you want a good job? I want a good pay. Why want a good pay? So that I can live easily and pay off my debts. Why don't you pay off your debts? So I don't have to have stress. <laughs> we are not answer that way. Right, so I can I can be free in my mind. And why to be free in my mind? Because from there I attain happiness. And from there I attain, you know, uh, rest and right, contentment. So people, you know, they, they, they seek things out. Right? You know, why do you want to be with this person? Because you know I, I love her. Right? Why do you love her? And right, because she makes me happy. Oh, you know, I know, you know, in a way, you know, we people say that. Right? And everything as any human being, Muslim or non-Muslim, right? Why do they want what they want? Because they're seeking for happiness and that's what they want they want they want ultimate happiness right? and in, in, in Allah and in the Prophet Allah and he was described to be the most cheerful the most joyful of people right and he teaches us how do you be happy in this world and in the next world happiness in the next world very simple obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just obey him and you'll be happy over there right? inshallah right happiness in this world don't be attached to this word. Just do it. Rabbi Rasulullah himself said that dunya, uh, The love of this world, it is the source of every wrongdoing. Every hurt, every pain, every disappointment, every you know stress is because you, you, you are so concerned and consumed by this world. And so if you want happiness in this world, you need to divorce yourself from the world. Right? And, that, and the sins of the past, you know, there was one saint who said that I have divorced, that he said that the, the dunya and the akhirah, right? one is the mother and one is the daughter. So I have divorced one so that I will be halal for the other one. And because in Islam, if you marry the mother, the daughter becomes haram unto you forever. Right? And if you marry a daughter, the mother becomes haram unto you forever. The mother in law is haram forever. Right? She's a maham to you forever, basically. Right? So he says, I will never go into the, the dunya right? because I want the akhirah. I choose one. You can't choose both, right? Because you know one becomes haram if you choose one, the other one, right? So and then it's also mentioned that uh, what's the saying, Muhammad? Okay, you can't see anyway. Right. So it, uh, so the love of this. Do you have to this to me? Ah, it's mentioned. Yeah. Okay. It's mentioned. It's mentioned that by some of the scholars, right? It's mentioned that uh, if you want. If you want Allah to love you, right? If you want Allah to love you, then don't desire anything of this world. And if you want the people to love you, then don't desire anything that is theirs. That means don't desire their stuff, <laughs> basically. Right? So that they will love you. Right? So it's, it's something, I, I can't remember the quote exactly, but I remember it to accompany me, inshallah. Right? I mean, so, don't love what is theirs. That means that what is with them? That means they are things. That means you envy. Envy. Yeah. Don't envy. That means don't envy. And the people will love you. Right? Because you don't, you know, you don't, and you don't bother them. And you know, with their stuff and their things, and you, you don't make use of people. Right? From that, from that point. Okay? So then you. Right? So, so he just asked the love of this world and the hereafter. Ansha'ahu ala ashrafil khalaqi. And Allah brought up Rasulullah and Shah is to bring up. Right? So it is from uh, there is a hadith where Rasulullah says that Adabani Rabbi right? My Lord, He disciplined me. Right? Or He gave me adab, He gave me etiquette. And how beautiful did He give me an etiquette? Right? How beautiful was His training of me right? with my etiquette and my akhlaq and my uh, my way. Right, so if he was trained by whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Al Ashraf al Khilal al Ashraf al Khilal wa Afdal al Khisal wa Asma al Sifa and the highest of attributes. Right, wa Asna al Halat and of the highest, the most pure of states, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what you want to learn about him. And because you're wondering, well, what are these things? What are these? What are these characteristics? What are what? What is all of these things about? And for us to love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa qamahu uswatan hasanatan fil fadail wal wal mak wal wal mukarramat. Faqala taala. And Allah subhanahu wa taala has said, and He has established Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a perfect example, right? With all of His virtues, 
and all of his uh, good good character. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا So he gives us all this a very clear formula for us. If you really love Allah, if you really want Allah, and you want the goodness of the next world, then the, the ayat says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ right? For surely there is no doubt. For you, في رسول الله Right, in Rasulullah, Uswat al Hasan. Right, the most perfect example. Right, follow him. The most perfect example. For whoso, and he's a good example for who? For whosoever desires Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, or has hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and hope in the next one. Right, if you have this, then follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to read it? And he's. Subhanahu wa ta'ala established the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a perfect example in virtues and merit. As he subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran of the meaning laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasanatun liman kana yarujullahi wal idullah yawmal akhirah wa dhakarallahu kathira from surah al-azab for surely Ahzab. For surely for you is a perfect example in the Messenger of Allah. For whosoever who hopes in Allah in the last day, and remember Allah in abundance. Do you want to continue? Yeah, okay. okay. Hence, he Taala has made following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and holding on to his guidance in the form of his speech, deeds, as well as the rest of his states as states as proof for a person's faith in Allah. Taala, it is the only guided way, the key to to bliss in this world and the next. Yes. Right. So here, you know, again, he, he establishes. The reason why we are learning about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because Allah has made right from this verse that He has made Rasulullah to be our guide right and our leader right and then whosoever holds on to His guidance and His guidance in the form of what in the form of His speech in the form of His actions in the form of His states right in the form of His you know His, his reactions to people right this will be a proof to a person's faith. That means how strong is your faith? Is how strong you hold on to the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? And uh, so, and it is the way of guidance. Right? It is the key to everlasting bliss and happiness in this world and the next world. And so, you're looking for happiness, right? And all human beings, as we mentioned, every human being looks for happiness at the end of the day. Everyone loves the feeling of happiness. And it's like sugar you know, is addictive because sugar gives you this high for, for a while, right? And then you crash after that. <laughs> right? But you know what? That's, that's what people are looking for. Right? They want to feel this happiness of eating sugar. Right? But it's only for a while. Right? But the ulama, right, who whenever they give salah on Rasulullah they taste honey in their mouths. They, they exist. Right? They do that. There are those that when you read the Quran, they taste honey in their mouths and they're not even eating. I said no, and, and they even discuss about it. Can I do so in Ramadan? <laughs> right, because they're like, you know, where's the honey coming from? <laughs> right, but you know, but you know, like, so they even discuss what's the the rule the ruling about that because they have tasting honey, right, and they're not eating honey. They are just doing slam and they're doing they're doing Quran. Right, so you know, they have this constant joy, and some of the and some of the things they said that if the kings of the world knew what we got, right, what we we attain in our night prayers. They would leave all of their kingdoms. They would abandon everything they have just to get one moment of what we get in our night prayers. Right? Of the bliss and the happiness and the, and the sweetness that they experience in their night prayers. And Imam Shafi mentioned that if it were not for companionship and this true Islamic brotherhood, right, all the night prayers, there is nothing in this dunya that I want. And I don't want to stay in this dunya anymore. But because of companionship, you know, friendship, Right, and because of night prayers, say I love the dunya, like all these two things. Right, so this is Allah. Right, uh, and I will need Arabic. 
The reason why I bring the Arabic, right, uh, is because uh, it's written by Habib, right, Habib al Hadi, right, Habib uh, Hadi bin Ahmad bin Abdullah al Hadda, right, and these are of the scenes of, uh, of the Lord. And the reason why we read from their Arabic texts is right, because they intend a lot in their books, right, there's a lot of intention from themselves. They make a lot of dua for those who read their books, and they make a lot of dua for those who study their books, and they make a lot of dua for those you know, who spread their books. Right, so you know, for all things in here, right, so even if you don't understand, right, it is to get the blessing right, of the written Arabic text. Right, so even when I, when I go into hadith or whatsoever, I will try my best to try and see the hadith in Arabic first, because that was how it was said. Right, I am a Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وهديه صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم في كل شؤونه وأحواله ليتسنى له حسن الاقتداء وينال سعادة الاهتداء بأشرف الخلق وأكرم الرسل صلى الله عليه وصلى الله عليه وعليهم أجمعين منفنشة ولنذكر الآن طرفا موجزا منها كمفتاح لاستقسائها من مراجعها في كتب الحديث وصيرة والله موفق. As such, it is only incumbent, 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 incumbent on every believer to expand their utmost efforts in striving to know the biography of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his guidance in every affair. And state of his soul uh-huh. Uh-huh. as to facilitate being follow being able to follow him وسلم, in the best manner to achieve the ultimate bliss of being guided by the most noble of creations uh-huh. and the most honor of all prophets. May Allah's prayers be upon all of them together. For this book we will be mentioning just the surface of this great life. So that it will be a key to be used to assess further readings of in books of hadith, prophetic traditions and sirah, prophetic biography. And Allah is the giver of success. Alright. So that, that is the introduction to this book. Right, we are at what time are we now? 9.05. 9.05. Okay. Class is what time? 9.30. Alright. So I'm going to go to the next chapter. I'm going to translate it. Right. Uh, no. Huh? Mashallah. Why? Nothing. Are you okay? Yeah. Is this okay? Maybe, yeah. maybe. I'm going to go to the next chapter. Okay, I'll, I'll explain the first part. Right? So, what is that? Okay, I'm so, is this and for, for, for as such, right? Because, and by, by whatever he has just said about the, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? It is only appropriate, right? For the, for the believer, right? If you're really a, a real believer, you need to exert your utmost efforts, everything you have. And it's the most important thing, right? I was talking to my mother from like from before, like you know, when we try to assess, you know, what has happened to the ummah, to the Muslims, and right? why are you know you see all over the world, right? People are, are you know are, are go, getting further and further from Islam, the Muslims, right? They are, the percentage of those who don't pray in Singapore is very high, right? From Muslim statistics, right? It's very high those who don't pray in Singapore, and right? those who don't even know their religion. So why are our Muslims getting further and further away from Islam, right? And it, and it boils down to two things mainly. And these two things were said to us by Rasulullah himself. And when you find, you know, trials after trials, or tribulation, or calamity, or calamity in the Ummah, right? Then he said, I, 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 I advise you on two things. Hold on to two things: the book of Allah and my way. Never leave these two things. These are the, these are, these are saviors for you. Right? So now in our zaman, in our time, right? We, we, we hold, we have those around us, our families, our children, our ourselves. Right, to hold on to these two things, the Quran and the Sunnah. Which is why for these two classes you know, uh, for, for, for the week, right, there's Sirah and then there is Tafsir. Right, for those who are coming with Tafsir. Because Quran and Sunnah, right, there is no other, is it, there's no Munji, there is no, there is no other uh, Savior right, for us except the Quran and the Sunnah. Right, in no matter what time you're in, you cannot be without the Quran and the Sunnah. Right, so he says for every he's saying that every Muslim to exert the most that they can, right, and we hardly even you know uh, you know we have we have yet to really learn about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi 
Wasallam. Right? Exit the most you can uh, to learn more about him. Right, uh, to know about his life and his guidance. Allahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Right, every affair of his, so that we can perfect our copying of him. We can perfect our following of him. Right, we can perfect him being our leader, right, who is guiding us. Right, and from there, we will, inshallah, definitely reach right the happiness and the joy right of being guided. Right, by the most noble of all of creation. Sallallahu alayhi wa So now he says, he goes on, he says, he mention a bit, right, a small, because when you learn, when you learn sirah, right, you start small. Okay, you learn the gist of the life. And then you go deeper, and you go deeper, and you go deeper. And the books of sirah, the books of biography, it can be very extensive, right? It can be so much detail in there, and it can be overwhelming. And you are, and, and it is, it is it's amazing because you're wondering, like, did the, did the companions really write down this amount of information right, on the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Right, and he was said that yes, the companions, they were so obsessed with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they knew there were people who were going to come who will not see him. Because they saw part of their faith as being, you know, because of they were with him. So the strength of their faith was because they were standing there in front of him, and they witnessed what they witnessed. So they know there are people who will come who will not witness all these things, and they need to witness. They need to see it. They need to know of it. So they pen down everything in great detail, right? For those, for the sake of those who will come later on. So you know who is your prophet. So you know, in, in learning about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are three aspects. Remember, we can do, there are three sciences that you can go into. Sira, which is biography, so the life story of Rasulullah from beginning to end. And there is Shamail. Shamail is characteristics. Right? So they speak about how his hair was, how his eyebrow, uh, eyebrows were, how his nose was, how would he sneeze, how would he cough, how would he yawn, how would he eat certain foods, how would he... So basically his entire way, externally and also internally. How would he you know, laugh, how would he speak. So everything about him, the Sahaba wrote down. Because they saw it as important and they saw it as part of faith. And for us to understand. And he was said that and they said that you know if someone wanted to write to draw the Prophet from the scripture or the Sulla, they could. But they're not allowed to, right? But they could. But it's so detailed how they described him. Right, the Sahabas. And the third science that why you know by which you learn about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is hadith. Right? His words himself. Right? And hadith is a, such a beautiful science, inshaAllah. I make dua that maybe you know, in the future we can have more class of hadith because hadith has so much solution right, to, 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 to society, to life, to everything right, in hadith. Right, so I'm going to go to the next part of the book. Right, run okay? I'm going to stretch your legs. I'm going to legs. <laughs> okay, so the next part of the book, Nasabu Sharif wa Nubda min ahwarihi fi sagarihi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Right, so he begins by saying right, the noble uh, lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and a brief summary right, of this, the states and situations of his childhood. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so I'm going to write down the lineage, right, and now I'm going to say some things about the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you have Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Abdullah Abu Talib. Right, bin. Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim bin Hashim Kusaykila <laughs> Ka, 
Okay, the song eh? Sing together eh? Okay? Then you can record sikit and then you hear when you're working, you memorize it eh? Then, then you, and you want to memorize the lineage. You tell me the benefits of memorizing the lineage of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alright, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Muhammad Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib Hashim, Abdul Manaf Kusik, Kilaf Muraka, Abdul Eghalib Fahim, Malik Nadir Kinana Khuzayma Mudrika Ilyas Mudar Nizar Madin Adnan Okay Let's try again, try again, try again Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Muhammad Abdullah Abdul Muttalib Hashim Abdul Manaf Kusayki Lab Murrah ka <laughs> Because <laughs> I just realized that they put anything there. Oh, yeah. right, so Muhammad tahu eh, Abdullah tahu eh. Hey, eh. right. Muhammad itu Abdullah itu eh. So Abdul Mu Talib Hashim Abdul Manaf Kusay Kilab Murro Ka Ab Ka Ab. Nu'e <laughs> Ma'adil. Okay, it's Ma'ad or Ma'adil? No, it's, I, it's, 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 Ma'adil, you see, it's a Tanwin. 
Like, is it you want to start with and mark also can. Mark like all the ones that I put a, a sukun in the middle, right? Like this one. Ka'am, right? It's Ka'am bin actually. I thought it's Lu'ai, not Lu'ai. Lu'ai. Oh, Lu'ai. Lu'ai. Uh, Feher also. Feherin. Feherin. That's how his name is pronounced. Right? But then the song, I just don't, I don't see the turnings. <laughs> I just like it. Okay? But it's just mm-hmm. Arabic. Alright. Alright, the benefits of learning the, the Nasab of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the uh, the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so, of the benefits is that it is of it's a shifa, it is a cure. Right, so for someone you know, if especially uh, diseases of the heart, like stress of the heart, right, the same lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it cures. Right, it does uh, it does cure you. Right, and Rasulullah did say, memorize my lineage. Right? And even in the mouth we just read today. Right, so in the Maulid, it is said, you know, that there is a verse there mm-hmm. Right, that mentions the part of his lineage and it says that Memorize his lineage Fahfas usulihi Hatta tara fi sislati usuli adnana Sallallahu alayhi Fa hunaka qif Wa'alam bi raf'ihi la sma'ila Kala abi mishwana Sallallahu alayhi Right, so that part of the Maulid that we just read Right, so What does it mean? Huh? It's a cure It's a cure so that part of the Bible, whereby you know he mentions, you know, uh, the, the the first part of the lineage of the entire thing, and then he says wahfas, say that, say that, Omar, say wahfas, memorize, right, the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam until you reach Adana, Adana, na, Adana, fahuna ka qif, and here stop, right, wa alam bi rafi, and know that you will continue to Ismaila, kana lil abi ni'wana. And kind of uh, that, that he was he used to he was a uh, help uh, and assistance to his father than this than the Ibrahim mm-hmm. right so you know so you can memorize from and also in the hadith says that he once sat down he said Anna I am Muhammad bin Abdullah bin uh, bin Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim bin Abdul Manaf and he went into his entire lineage until he reached Adnan and then he says Wa baada Adnan kathabal al nasabun. Right, he says after Adnan, right, the the lineage, the genealogists, I don't know, what do you call them? The lineage people, eh? Right? <laughs> the people who, who study lineage, right, they have light, right, they have light, right. So after Adnan, they have light. So from, from him and Adnan, we know for sure who they were, right. Uh, after Adnan, we don't know, but we know he links to Nabi Ismail, who links to Nabi Ibrahim, and then all the Nabi Adam, right. Okay, I'm going to go into the people of his lineage. Right. And and this is interesting. One well, is interesting, and it is beneficial. And the reason, and the thing about well, how we are going to conduct our sirah classes is that with every part of sirah, right, inshallah, right, I hope to actually bring in the the lessons that we learn. Right. So it's not just going to be like the storytelling, right, but it's going to be you know why are we learning all these things? What's the point? How does this help me in my life? Right, in a way. Right, so everything from from so from from the theory aspect to the practical aspect and the love of Rasulullah so sallallahu alaihi wasallam so and see the perfection of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So every single person in the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, know one thing. Every single individual here, right, all the way up to Nabi Adam alaihi wasallam himself, right, all of them carry the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in themselves. Right, the light of Rasulullah was the first thing created by Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right, especially in the hadith by once once the Sahaba came on the companion to come to Rasulullah and he said, Ya Rasulullah, tell me what was the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created before everything else? And then Rasulullah turned to him and said, Don't you know? The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, it was the light of your Prophet. And the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then this light, he was cast into the loins right, or into the genes of Nabi Adam alayhi salam. And it's related that this light was at first, you know, at the back of his head, right, behind. And the angels would crowd behind him, Nabi Adam, right, and they were like, they were admire the light from behind. And they just admire this light on Nabi Adam alayhi salam. And Nabi Adam would wonder what's going on, <laughs> what are they doing behind me, right? So he asked, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says that that light right, is the light of one of your descendants, right, the best of all my creation. And say, Allah, I want to see the light. So Allah moved the light to do his forehead. So you could ever see his reflection and see the light on himself. Right? So Nabi Adam you know, himself, he saw the name of Rasulullah in paradise written on the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah writes, Allah Muhammad Rasulullah on his own throne. 
right? So the land of Rasulullah Islam, you know, it goes and it moves, right? And as we go into the Sira, right, there are relations that they will speak about the light manifesting on his grandparents and on his on his ancestors and also on his own father itself. And how a light moved from his father to his mother when his mother conceived him, right, in her womb. Right, so this is the, the light of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, is there any questions that I go along? Uh, is there any questions that I go along? We just uh, ask it. Alright. So, from Rabbi Adam, right, and it's mentioned also in, in, in some hadith that this light, right, it was transferred to Nabi Idris alayhi salam. Right, and then, you know, Nabi you know, uh, Sayyidina Hawa, the wife of Nabi Adam alayhi salam, right, she would give up everything, she would give up, she would give up to twins. Right, and she would, you know, she gave birth in the span of like I can't remember how many years. Have your was mentioning, right? But basically, she every time she she conceived, she conceived a boy and a girl, right? And the law of Nabi Adam's time, right, is that the the boy and the girl of the same womb they are mahram, right? But boys and girls of different wombs, that means like like not your twin, right? Your sister, but not your twin, they are not mahram because they were the only human beings on earth, right? They have to be produced, right? So the, the Sharia, right, their law, is that your sibling is just the one who was in the womb with you. Right? Those who were not in with you in the same womb, and is born at different times, they are not your sibling. They're not your mahram. Right? There is a law of Nabi Adam. So uh so after she gives birth, right, Nabi Adam would pair the sister of this one to the brother of that one. Right, in a way. And right, he would not cross this way, you get the story of Habil and Kabil. And because Kabil, right, the two sons of Nabi Adam, Kabil Right, uh, had his own twin sister, right, and he was supposed to marry the twin sister of Habil. But Habil's twin sister was not as pretty as his twin sister. She was prettier. <laughs> so he wanted her. Right, so which is why he came. He 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 ended up killing his own friend right, because he wanted his own twin sister. But it was haram, right, because she was his sister, right, basically. Right, so there's a story of Habil Kabila. Allah mentions it in the Quran. Right, so but it was mentioned that when it comes when it came to Nabi Idris Allah himself, he was alone in the womb. Right, there was no sister with him. Right, because he carried the light of Rasulullah. So the light of Nabi Nabi Adam went to Nabi Idris. Right, so he came up by himself. Right, so there was no uh but he was still married somebody else's sister. Right, but there was no sister that was with him. Okay? So Nabi Idris is the son of Nabi Adam. Nabi Adam. Yeah, so so, so then the light travel right through his own, and then maybe see, maybe see his grandson. Adam Idris no one saw that. Right, Idris is the son. Ah, uh, I don't remember a prophet from Nabi Adam son. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Seed is if I'm not on Nabi Seed, Nabi Seed is his uh, grandson. Right, so the light, so the light will pass down to the prophets. And so he said in, in in narrations that that was the light that saved Nabi Noah's ship from being destroyed by the flood because he was in Nabi Noah when he was on the ship. Right, and this light went to Nabi Noah and he was on the ship. Was this light was on the ship with Nabi Noah and he prevented the ship from drowning. And this light from Nabi Noah went to Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam right, and he was in Nabi Ibrahim and this light. Of Rasulullah SAW prevented Nabi Ibrahim from being burnt by the fire, and because he was cast, you know, he was actually catapulted. And the story goes, you know, that, that, that the fire that Nimrod made for Nabi Ibrahim was huge. Only oh, Nimrod was his people. It was a huge bonfire. Like, it was like it was span like the entire area that no one could even come near. It was so hot, so they actually built a catapult, right? And they put Nabi Ibrahim inside, <laughs> right? And then they. The the, the, the the rope and then he slung Nabi Ibrahim into the fire. Right? So, you know, and, and the story goes that Nabi Ibrahim, when he was in the catapult, uh, Jibril came to him and said, You know, oh Ibrahim, do you need anything? And he said, Have you catapult? Right? And then Jibril came, Do you need anything? And Ibrahim? Do you need anything? And Nabi Ibrahim said to Jibril, He said, From you? No. Right? But but my, but the knowledge that Allah knows how I am is enough for me. So, he didn't ask. Right, so he got catapulted into the into the fire. Right, Allah took to the fire, be cool for Ibrahim and be safe. Right, and so he was safe in the fire. But the ulama say it's because of the light of Rasulullah that he carried in himself that protected him from being burnt. And in fact, he said that the time when he was in the in the fire, in in his bonfire, right, it was the most beautiful time of his life. <laughs> and was it was like paradise in there. <laughs> Allah made paradise for him in, in the fire right, of uh, that was made that was you know, burnt for him. 
And then it, this light went into Nabi Ismail alayhi salam. And this light prevented Nabi Ismail from, from a knife from cutting his throat. <coughs> and so when he was, and Nabi Ibrahim tried to solder him, right? The knife wouldn't cut. Right? Because the light has to be passed. And we look in the lives of, of our Islam's ancestors, that you know, there are a few of them, that the moment the wife gets pregnant with, uh, with the next person to carry the light, the father passes away. And this, the same thing happened to the son's father himself. Right? So he was 18, eh? The son's father was 18 when he passed away. Very young. We think, we never think of how old he was. <laughs> we know that the son was born an orphan. But we never asked how old was his, was his father. He married at 18. And, he, and the first night his wife conceived, he went off overseas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he went off overseas um, to for trade, to earn money for his new family. And he died along the way. He was an 18 year old young man. Right. So there was Sayyidina Abdullah. Right. So Sayyidina Hashim was the same thing. Okay, sorry. He right. got married. Right. His wife conceived. He traveled. Died. But not Abdullah. Huh? Not all of them. Mm. Not all of them. Right. Some of them. Right. So uh, going back to the lineage of Rasulullah eh? sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you said the benefits of learning his lineage is just a cure. It is a cure. <coughs> it is a, a healing. A healing. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's a healing. Just yeah, that's what uh, I and right, it's a healing for whosoever has memorized it. So, like in Tarim, right? Everyone there has memorized the lineage. They don't have to sing also. You can just say, right? For me, I must sing. <laughs> I know what comes things. <laughs> yeah, but they will be like, Muhammad, and then, right? So, Subhanallah, they memorize it since they were young. And for us, that like, we don't even like, it's, it's difficult to actually you know memorize uh, lineages, <laughs> right? So may Allah really help us wherever, wherever we can. Alright. So the one thing about all of Rasulullah's ancestors as you go into his ancestors eh, is that they were the most okay, they had the light of Rasulullah in their faces. So some of them, right, like for example Sayyidina Sayyidina uh Nidab. Right. Nadir. Right, Sayyidina Nadir. So the Nadir, right, he was called a Nadir. Nadir means the illuminated one. Right, so there were a few of them. Right, right, in their names itself, you could see, right, the people named them after light. Because they had a light that was manifesting in them. And the people could see. Right, that there was light in their faces. Right, so you know, they had that. And every single one of the ancestors, they were the best of people in their time. The most handsome, right, by consensus, the most handsome. Because they carried the genes of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so we are like, you know, I got my mother's genes. This is the other way around. They got his genes, right? You know what I mean? Like they got his characteristics in them, and they are the father, right? They are the grandfather, but they, you know, they manifested the characteristics of their great descendant. And for us, we are manifesting the characteristics of our ancestors, not our descendants. <laughs> right? But for them, it's the other way because the descendants, the descendant, the great descendant, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was, he's his. He, he overpowered everything else when he was in their loins. So there were of them who used to say, I can't remember, it was Nizar, so yeah, Nizar was in a, one of them. And he used to say that I could, whenever he would sit down by himself right, and he would uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would hear like tasbih from inside of him. He would hear subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah from inside of him. And it's not him. And they could hear, that they could hear Rasulullah Islam inside of them. The light of Rasulullah. You can't un- imagine it, right? Because we don't have the light. Inshallah, <laughs> <laughs> <Right? laughs> we have the light reflected all of us. Right? And as the videos of Rasulullah <laughs> right? But the light of Rasulullah is a physical light, is a spiritual light. It's two ways, eh? it's physical and spiritual. There was a physical light that was seen, and there was a spiritual light that was seen. Right? So, like, like SubhanAllah, <laughs> we, can't, right? we can't imagine that. Right? So, as far as, as, as I mentioned, when you come to Sirah, you hear a lot of narrations, a lot of hadith. And because as mentioned, Sira is not like Aqidah, it's not like Fiqh. Right? Whereby the hadith, right, they accept any hadith that comes, that is heard. Right? Because, you know, it is, it is basically building love for Rasulullah so, so, so. Unlike Aqidah, Aqidah is just belief, the hadith has to be completely 100% confirmed. Right? So you see, I'll quote a lot of hadith for Sira, and right? don't blame me on it, and right? don't ask me, Sahih ke tak, right? Right, uh, because like it's probably eighty percent hadith, seventy percent hadith. But because anything the Sahabas bring, they take for Sirah. For Sirah is story, storytelling. 
And the sirah is uh, love, building of love for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you see the, the difference between the different areas of Islam. So when you learn more about Islam, you hear people, you know, keep calling out people on talking about things that are like weak and like not sahih and whatsoever. Right? Like basically, they have not studied how hadiths are being used. Right? Hadiths are not discarded, right? But they are they have their places in the sciences of Islam. Right? So the, so the ulama discussed it. Right? Where they use the sub parts, uh, different types of hadiths. Right, so I'm gonna go. Okay, so and they were, so they, they, and they were all, all of them who those of those, those of them who lived to to old age, they were the leaders of their people, right? By consensus, all of them, they right, became the most beloved, right, they became the most honored, the most uh, revered, and they are natural leaders, all of them, carrying the qualities of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all of them, and all of them without question. All of them were monotheists. They did not worship idols. Right? Even though there was no prophet during that time, and they were not, uh, basically they were by themselves, but they were only worshippers of the one true God. They followed the, the religion of Nabi Ibrahim and right? so, so anyone who carried the light of Rasulullah was not allowed to bow to any idol whatsoever, out of honor for the light of Rasulullah And so we know his parents, right? And, and he's only in the father's side. The mother and even sorry also. So the mother is also protected. So in the Amina, protected all the way. Uh, so the Amina uh, joins up with her husband also in one of the grandfathers, right? In their lineage, he joins. Okay? Okay, so okay. Yeah. Alright. Hmm. Hey. Okay. I want to continue to say the mind. No, because not all of them have stories. Some of them have stories. Okay. We have to pause there. Right, so <laughs> we have to pause there. Okay, he prepared stories for almost every one of his grandfathers. Right, for us you know, to appreciate who they were as people. Eh? Uh, inshallah next week. Okay. Any questions? No questions. They say that the lineage of the Adnan who uh, that is mine uh, is like Amun, right? Is it was it Amun or? It is. Um, the hadith says that after Adnan don't memorize. Right, because the the people who the lineage people right they have life right but I have seen the like, ulama and and real real scholars I I trust scholars I have seen them give the lineage all the way right. But they were like protected because they had the They also all of them all the Nabi Adam down to Nabi Rasulullah himself all of them were monotheists all of them uh, had the light in their faces and all of them were of the best of character of their people. And all of them were the most beautiful of the people also. This is why the Habib Umar, that he says that in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the father of Nabi Ibrahim, alayhi salam, the one who made idols, right? he said that what, what, what is meant here is not father, but paternal uncle. Right? Because the, the, in, in the Arab culture, right, your paternal uncle is as good as your father. Same, so when Rastam was brought on a, on a caravan, and, uh, and Bahira the monk, I will go into the story, I asked, who is the father of this boy? Uh, Abu Talib, who is his paternal uncle, said me. And he was not lying. Because the culture was, the paternal uncle is the father. Right? So he said me. And then Bahira turned to him and said, no, it can't be impossible. His father should be dead. Right? Because he knew the, 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 the signs of the last prophet. So Abu Talib said, yes, his real father is dead. I am his father now. You know? So Nabi Ibrahim, right, his real father died. And he was looked after by his uncle who was an idol worshipper and in fact he made idols. <laughs> so when he says when the Nabi Ibrahim says to his father, Ya Ya Abati, oh my father. And he's referring to the uncle. Right. So he didn't get it like eh? <laughs> the uncle didn't get it like. Okay, good question. Any other questions? About the lineage? You remember the lineage already? The song? Sure. If song is easy. Song in the Hafa is Like all of us, the Hafa, all the 35 prophets, right? Madam, please, no. Because song. <laughs> you already remember the 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 I don't know the Malika song. Oh, 